Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we got an additional video here. Uh, we're going over an aspect of theory of the firm. On the IB guide, it asks you to diagram price and quantity comparisons of a monopoly firm uh, compared to a perfectly competitive market. Looking at price quantity as, as well as looking at um, the changes on welfare loss, is it allocatively efficient, productively efficient, and so on. Here I've drawn uh, for perfect competition, the industry and the firm. And in graph C, we have the monopoly. And on an exam, you don't necessarily need to draw all three of these diagrams. You can just be drawing the firm and the monopoly or the industry and the monopoly, depending on what comparisons you want to make. So I'm gonna show all three uh, so that we have it all in one place. So first, how would we draw this? First, we'll draw uh, the industry, and we're going to draw the supply of the industry. This will be labeled S1. We want to remember that this is equal to our marginal cost. In addition, we'll have our demand curve for the industry. And we're going to remember that this is equal to our marginal benefit. So here we have D1 equal to the marginal benefit. So that where S1 equals D1 at this point, let's say that's point A, it establishes the price that all firms must accept. Now, in addition, at point A, we'll know that it's allocatively efficient since the marginal benefit equals the marginal cost. So let's just illustrate that equilibrium created by the industry. We'll call this the price accepted by the perfectly competitive firm, price for the perfectly competitive firm, and that this is the quantity for the perfectly competitive firms that are all within this industry. Now this will set the price that all firms must accept, so I'll choose a slightly lighter green and this will come all the way across. And I'm going to draw this all the way across the next two graphs. And you'll see why later. So here we have the firm. And I'll draw the supply curve for the firm that has that backwards J shape due to the law of um, diminishing marginal returns. So let's draw that supply curve. Going back using our red color. Here we have supply. The, diminish the law of diminishing marginal returns sets in. And then we have the upward slope for the individual firm. We'll call this S2. Again, remembering that it's equal to the marginal costs of production. And we're going to assume that the firm here is in the long run. So we'll illustrate. Let's choose another color here. Let's choose purple. The average total costs. All right. It's producing at its lowest point, so it's productively efficient. Here we'll label this average total costs. Okay. Uh, the firm will produce where MR equals MC, and we're going to remember that uh, in perfect competition, price for the firm is equal to the average revenue, which is equal to the marginal revenue, which is equal to, as well, marginal benefit since this perfectly elastic curve is essentially their demand curve for the firm. So we want to remember where MR equals MC, let's say that point B, that determines the level of output. And that output will be set here. Okay, again, that's the quantity for the per perfectly competitive firms. Okay, now we're just missing our monopoly graph. Here the demand curve is downward sloping. So, and we're gonna draw our supply and demand curve. So let's draw that first. Here we have our supply of the monopoly. And then we'll have our demand for the monopoly. Okay. 
we will have D1, again, remember, equal to the marginal benefit, not to be confused with this uh, D1, so I'll call this D2. And uh, we have our supply curve, S1, or S3, I should say, by this point, equal to the marginal cost of production. We need to draw our marginal revenue curve for the monopolist. So here it branches off. And let's just say it comes down to this point. So that is the MR curve for the monopolist. And we notice also that the demand curve is relatively inelastic, which is reflective of a monopoly that doesn't face too much competition. So profit maximization as a rule, just to review, Profit maximization, profit max is achieved where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost. Here's the MR curve, here's the MC curve. So the intersection of the two will determine the level of output. Output here, and I'll label this. QM for monopoly, the quantity for the monopolist at QM. And I take that line straight up to my demand curve. The monopolist will price according to their demand. Oops. And that will set the price for the monopolist. All right, and I'll call this PM, price for monopoly. P, M, which is price for a monopoly. And again, here I can illustrate the price for the perfectly competitive firm. So this is price for the perfectly competitive firm. And then over here also price for the perfectly competitive firm. That perfectly elastic demand curve, uh, again, is where price equals AR, MR, or MB for the perfectly competitive um, firm, as I've said before. Now we want to also illustrate where S1 equals D2, or S3 equals D2, this intersection would highlight the quantity of output that the perfectly competitive firm would be producing at. So here, at this point, I can illustrate that that quantity is the quantity that the perfectly competitive firm would be generating, or the industry of the perfectly competitive firm would be generating. This is the price for the perfectly competitive firm, price at PC, which is also equal to the average revenue for the perfectly competitive firm, which is equal to the marginal revenue for the perfectly competitive firm, which is also equal to, squeezing this in, the marginal benefit for the perfectly competitive firm. So let me label some points that can help me with my analysis. Point A, point B, I'm gonna go ahead and label this point C, right over here. Here, C, and I can highlight C, this is point D, and this is point E, where we can see that the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. All right, so how can we compare uh, the industry with the firm and the monopoly? Well, one, let's look at price, all right? Let's look at price. For the industry, price is set where S1 equals D1 at price for the perfectly competitive firms within this industry, price at PC. This is the price in graph B that all firms will accept, price at PC. When we look at the monopoly, we look at price of PC being less than the price of the, mon of the monopolist. So one advantage of a per perfectly competitive firm or industry is that the price that they generate is going to be less than the price charged or demanded by the firm. So the price at PM in graph C, price for monopolist, is greater than the price for the perfectly competitive firms. So that is an advantage of perfectly competitive markets or market structures. They price lower than the monopolist. So there we can see that, that difference. What about quantity? 
in the industry where S1 equals D1. At point A, it sets quantity for all the perfectly competitive firms within that industry at quantity PC. In graph B, the quantity produced by an individual firm is at quantity PC. And in graph C, when we look at uh, where the monopolist produces at quantity QM, we see that it is less than the quantity for the perfectly competitive firm. Quantity for perfectly competitive firms in that industry have S3 and D2 reflective of S1, D1 in the industry. They're producing at point C, they would produce more outputs than the monopolist. So the monopolist is under allocating resources towards production. They're producing less at QM, QM less than quantity at perfectly competitive firms within an industry. Okay. What else? We can also look at the topic of allocative efficiency. We want to remember that allocative efficiency follows the rule of producing where the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. And we see that with the industry, uh, it is always allocatively efficient in theory. It always produces where MC equals MB. S1 equals D1 at point A. At point A, marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost, thus allocative and productive. I'm sorry, it's allocatively efficient, and so consumer and producer surplus are at maximum. We can also illustrate that um, by highlighting that here we have the consumer surplus being maximized. We can also highlight that the um, producer surplus is being maximized here. So the sum of the consumer and producer surplus is at max because it's allocatively efficient point A, producing where MC equals MB. In addition, uh, for the individual firm, that perfectly elastic price, remember, is price is equal to the average revenue, equal to the marginal revenue, equal to the marginal benefit. So the individual firm will produce, by following the rule of profit maximization of MR equals MC, here's the MC curve, they're producing it, MR, but MR equals marginal benefit. So the firm itself is also allocatively efficient because at point B, MC also equals that marginal benefit. So it's also allocatively efficient. For the monopolist, we see that it under allocates. It's producing at QM. So there's a welfare loss that's generated. We can see that welfare loss here. Let me go ahead and highlight that. All right here is the welfare loss for the monopolist between the points CDE. This is a result of the marginal benefit at point D being greater than marginal cost at point E. And as a result, also, we get a reduction in the consumer surplus. So the consumer surplus has been reduced due to that higher price. So that would be seen here. I hope this is not going to look great, but there we go. There is the reduced consumer surplus, very, which is less than this area here. And we have a maximized producer surplus right over here, this shaded area here would be the maximized consumer surplus, producer surplus. So hopefully uh, this video is able to explain how we can use an industry graph for perfect competition, a firm graph for perfect competition, and a monopoly graph side by side to illustrate differences in price, perfectly competitive firms price lower than monopolists, differences in quantity, perfectly competitive firms produce more than the monopolist, and also discussing allocative efficiency. The industry is allocatively efficient. The firm is allocatively efficient. The monopolist is not. It under allocates, creating a welfare loss, increasing their producer surplus at the cost of reduced consumer surplus. One additional point is productive efficiency can also be highlighted. Productive efficiency is the concept of producing at minimum ATC. 
And the firm illustrates that they're producing at point B, which is at minimum average total cost. So the firm is productively efficient. But, but the monopolist is not. Even though we're, we're not illustrating the average total cost curve, uh, the firm is, alloc is productively inefficient since they don't face competition. All right, so those are some key points you can highlight through that graph and evaluation, the strengths and weaknesses of uh, monopolists versus perfectly competitive industries and firms. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment and don't for forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.